Andre, behind us are two three-row luxury SUVs. And what are special about them? Well, I brought something that hasn't existed before, a three-row Grand Cherokee. It's a brand new model, and it's luxurious and also off-road capable. Yeah, and I got the new Land Rover Defender. The cool thing is they overlap on price, but they go about their business in a pretty different way. Let's talk about the engines. If you want something truly American, you get this. A giant SUV with three rows of seats and a Hemi V8 engine under the hood. Right here, it's a 5.7 liters of goodness, almost 360 horsepower, and that V8 grumble. Of course, it is mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission and also has a four-wheel drive system with a low-range transfer case for proper off-roading. How would you like a chance at winning a free house? You heard right, a whole house. Our partners at Omaze are giving away a 3,250 square foot, four bedroom house that is walking distance from one of the coolest streets in Austin, Texas. This luxury home has big custom windows, floating stairs, walnut cabinets, and private balconies. Then again, maybe a free house isn't your style. Well then in that case, you can also opt for a $1.3 million cash prize. Enter the giveaway and you'll also support a great cause, Folds of Honor. This nonprofit organization provides educational scholarships to the spouses and children of America's fallen and disabled military service members. Enter for a chance to win today at omaze.com slash TFL Offroad and your donation will help support the thousands of scholarships that are given out by Folds of Honor. What would you do with a dream house or a million dollars? You won't know if you don't enter, so click the link below. gone a very different route in terms of sophistication and technology underneath the hood. So you have one of two engine choices. The base engine is a four cylinder. <laughs> the base engine is a four cylinder turbo. This is the upgraded engine. It's a three liter straight six. It's called a P3. Try again. That really, really Jimmy my crickets. <laughs> and the base engine is a two liter four cylinder, but this is the upgraded unit called the P400. This is a three liter inline six. It's turbocharged and it has an electronic supercharger just to spool up that boost a little bit quicker. Now it's made it to an eight speed automatic and a very sophisticated full time four wheel drive system. The power output on the three liter straight six in this vehicle is 400 horsepower, just a little bit under 395. It's got a lot of tech underneath this hood. It also has a mild hybrid system, um, which will shut the engine off at stoplights and assist in acceleration. A lot going on compared to the Jeep. All right, Andre, welcome to the Defender. Let's head up our off-road trail here. All right, so this is Tombstone Hill, right? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do Truth Side first, which is a little bit easier, still steep, and then there next, which is a lot of articulation there. Yep, and I've got- Which on, mode are you using? I'm just gonna try auto, actually. So really? that's going to allow the vehicle to figure out what the best traction control and stability programming is. I am going to use my low range, though. So just like that Jeep, both of these have a low range, which is kind of unusual. Well, for a three-row SUV, yeah. Yeah, it's fairly unusual. So, um, we are in four-wheel drive low, and we'll see how the Defender does. But, Tommy, I have to ask you this. I did not see tow hooks on the front of your Defender, so I'm not sure how off-road worthy this is. Oh, you'll be amazed, Andre. There is a tow hook. It's hidden behind the plastic shroud. Okay. But even though this vehicle does not have the optional locking rear diff, it only has the center locking okay. diff, Dude, this thing is so capable. You'd be amazed where a Defender will take you, um, even with an open diff front and back. The traction control is that good. And it also has the specs, right? You know, the ground clearance, the approach, departure angles. Uh, although it, the wheelbase is a little bit longish. Yep. Ooh. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah, so basically what's happening is we're picking wheels off the ground. We are in the off-road setting on the suspension. Um, but yeah, I mean, the ABS sensors are so quick to respond and grab the caliper that there's almost no delay. The ride is a little firm though. It is because it's extended upward, right? Right. It's supposed to retain a nice and soft compliant ride because of the dual bag setup. Yeah. But from my experience, it's, it's not really that soft. Stiffish. Yeah. But um, visibility is pretty good. 
Uh, you can jack the driver and the passenger seat up quite a bit because of the high roof. Mm -hmm. So you get what's called the command driving position where it feels like you're sitting on top of it. It's very, very satisfying. Yes, Tommy, your engine is very sophisticated, but it's also very complicated. And who knows how long it will last. Well, that may be true, but fuel economy wise, the Land Rover is rated higher than the Jeep. The Jeep is 17 combined, the Land Rover is 19 combined. So the combination of the mild hybrid and the forced induction is better for fuel efficiency. But you can also get a gas V6 in the Grand Cherokee. Yeah, that's true, but that also isn't a mild hybrid, nor is it forced inducted. So I think in terms of engine tech, the Land Rover has more of it. And I gotta say, this new Defender, this is an old new generation, it's been around, what, a year and a half, two years, right? Yeah, about that. And they've made it more kind of civilized and more luxurious than ever before. But sitting here on the inside, I love how kind of like, I don't know, macho and rugged this interior is. It's really nice, absolutely. Yeah. And for this kind of stuff, it feels right at home. I do have a very adjustable hill descent control, which I'm using right now. Front facing camera is engaged. Um, it's just, it's really, really cool, all the, the, the tech in here. It's, uh, it's not usually my thing, but Land Rover does a pretty good job of it. Do you want to give me your camera over there yeah. for the, another climb so I can kind of video the camera systems? For sure, absolutely. So this is a 3 meter straight 6 Defender like we talked about. It's a little bit twitchy off-road occasionally, um, you know, because you've got so many technologies working. They've done a pretty good job of dialing back the throttle response in certain modes, so it's not lurching you around too much. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it is a lot of tech going on underneath your right foot. I can occasionally feel it be just a little bit too aggressive for really slow speed maneuvers. And the brakes are a little bit too grabby. That's my other complaint. But apart from that, I know I've had, you know, a pretty rough history with these Defenders. <laughs> Every time I get one off-road, just astonished at what they can do right out of the box. Both of these vehicles are equipped with the same rubber, which is a little bit unusual when we compare OEM to OEM setups. They both have the optional off-road tire group, which means they both are rolling on a set of Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain adventure tires. I call them more of like a mild terrain, not in my opinion a true super rugged all-terrain, definitely not a mud terrain, but they're certainly better than your typical all-season. If we take a look at the wheels, we do see some differentiation there though. So. The Jeep has a set of 18 inch wheels, which is nice because um, smaller wheels typically better off-road, less to scrape up on the rocks, and you can typically fit a bigger sidewall. The funny thing is though, tire-wise, this is actually a smaller tire compared to the Land Rover. Now the Land Rover is rolling on a set of optional 20 inch wheels. If you want the straight six, you have to get at least a 19 inch wheel because the brakes don't fit around the cool 18 inch steel wheels that you get on the four cylinder version of the Land Rover. Now, these tires, visibly bigger, but the tread block is identical. And speaking of what's behind the tires, the suspension, they both are riding on air suspension, but a pretty different setup. Now, the Jeep actually is fairly sophisticated. It's a closed loop air suspension, which means it retains the air in its system. Uh, it's not constantly drawing and sucking air in from the outside environment. The Land Rover is very unique in its design. It's actually got a dual bag setup. So you got one bag for height and one bag for compression, which means that when you jack it up, it's supposed to retain a good ride. So Andre has challenged me to a lift because he says that Jeep put a lot of work into making that suspension go up and down quicker than the old one. Andre, do you want to race? Let's do a suspension war. Suspension lift war. Go all, are you all the way down? No. Yeah, you're cheating. We're going to go all the way down and then say three, two, one, lift them up. One, two, three, go. Well, I thought I could have you in a suspension lift, but I think you just beat me by a millisecond. Yeah, it was pretty close. That new Jeep is much faster than the old one, but Land Rover has been doing this for a long time and it may have won. Hmm. So I'm gonna start this just like you. You wanna go in a low range? Yes, so that's a very important button because not many other competitors have this. Well, so this is really, the L specifically is targeted at Telluride, uh, Explorer, Traverse, yes. Yes. Highlander. 
None but, of those have a low range. Yeah, but this Grand Cherokee L seems like it has a wide range of pricing and options. It's really quite, you know, versatile. This one though, 67K, right? Yes, quite pricey. It's quite pricey. Yeah, but still good value. And I can show you also in my beautiful digital dash uh, because I have a lot of options. Um, I'm in auto mode right now, so I'm kind of crawling. And now my traction control system is working. Uh, I wanted to show you my night vision. Oh yeah, there. <laughs> Do you see our videographers? <laughs> yeah, I see your night vision. It's There's actually a, a heat sensing camera, right? Yes. Do you have that? I do not have that on mine, oh, no. Okay. I'm not sure how useful that is right now during the daytime. Well, no, that's not, but you can see animals while you're traversing terrain. So, Jeep is kind of... Jeep what? is a, what? kind of a, a very confusing naming for their four-wheel drive systems, Andre. <laughs> so it's Quadratrack 1, Quadratrack 2, yes. and then naturally Quadra Drive 2 It's yes. the top end model. But if you get the Quadra Drive 2, you get this kind of trick limited slippery diff. Mm -hmm. So not a true locker, but and they say it's capable of pretty impressive torque distribution between the rear wheels. But you know what? I'm specifically going super slow. Okay. I'm trying to make it as difficult as possible. And I can you could hear the ABS and the traction control system, you know, doing its thing, but I don't think I'm slipping at all. No, not at all. It's doing really, really well. And that's of course low range. Torque feels good with this V8. Yeah. Feels like you've got plenty of oomph. No issue. And I'm in second gear. You see up here. You're not even first. I'm not in the <laughs> first. So I can I can gear down and actually crawl slower. There is something very satisfying about having a big lumpy V8 on the rocks. Yeah. Although it's super quiet. Yeah. I can I cannot hear it right now. Almost nothing. Yeah. Well let me descend and see how that works. Now I have a feeling, and actually I know that this vehicle is really capable of a lot of crawling yeah. ability because at the launch we went over some pretty pretty gnarly terrain. Yeah. But let's be honest, Andre, this is about as aggressive as anyone is realistically going to take this vehicle. When you're talking about two SUVs with lots of off-road heritage and also military routes, numbers are very important, of course. And the ground clearance on this Jeep Grand Cherokee, they gave it up to about 10.9 inches of ground clearance. But of course it depends on how you measure, what wheel tire packages you get, uh, but on this one it's 10.9. The Land Rover Defender actually has a little bit more ground clearance, about 11 and a half inches. And approach and departure angles, well, the Defender is a little bit better in that department as well. Yeah, and you know what, when uh, Jeep first introduced the L version, right, the long wheelbase version, uh, I thought, you know, they might just focus on like, family features, luxury features, but they still went on for the trail rated badge, right? They did, although it's worth noting, we don't have the Trailhawk trim yet. No. Right? Well, do you know something I don't? I do, no, I do not know anything <laughs> that you don't. All we know is that they chose to reveal the three row first, Yeah. called the L, uh, and that the two row is gonna come later, and I'm hoping that's the one with the Trailhawk configuration. I really hope so. You know, there's a lot of other rumors, like different engine options. Hybrids. Et cetera, et cetera, hybrids. Do you wanna try your hill whoa, descent? Whoa, whoa, uh, first gear is not holding me. Okay. Yes. Let me enable hill descent control. Use the paddles to adjust speed, interesting. Oh, dude, so I was in first gear and low, and I was, ex did you see that? I was accelerating down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was not a happy, I was not a happy camper, but now I am a happy camper because I have uh, hill descent control that's helping me. So it's increments of about th uh, one mile an hour. Right? Yeah, almost. It, I'm in the second speed right now. Right. Second hill descent speed. Oh, here comes the uh, rain. Here comes the rain. Our, our video crew oh, geez, is crying. Be not happy. All right. Well, let me speed up. Yeah, because... let's speed it up before they get too drenched. But uh, this truth side went swimmingly, I think. Yeah, no problems whatsoever. Once again, I think the ride is also pretty firm. Yeah, this is all the way up. Yeah, uh, both of them are, are um, you know, relatively unwilling to articulate like, like you would on a more solid axle vehicle. But hey, we, uh, we made it up and down with almost no difficulty. That was really impressive. Okay, let's try it there. Now, welcome to the interior of the brand new Grand Cherokee L. And if there's something that's unique about this new model is the interior, I think the quality and the materials and the luxury has just been stepped up to a higher level, way above where it was before. Let me fire this engine up and I can show you some of the features. I think this is a good time to also talk about price and value. The sticker price on this Grand Cherokee L Overland edition 
is at just above 67,000 bucks. But I have every luxury feature that I probably need. I have heated and ventilated seats. I have 360 degree cameras. I have a front camera. I have a heads up display. I have night vision infrared camera. Both of those cameras have their own squatters up front so they can clear the mud after I go off-roading. Um, I have a leather wrapped steering wheel with wood everywhere. I have a large screen. I have air suspension controls down here that I'll show you in a second. Um, and I have also adaptive cruise control system, also lane keep assist system. Uh, what, else, what else do I need? And also, on top of all of this, a premium 19-speaker Macintosh stereo. Oh yeah, and also a panoramic roof. Right here is my transmission shifter. Drive, reverse, park. Here is my suspension control. I can actually lower or raise the suspension uh, with a flick of a switch, but it can also be done automatically for me if I switch modes which I can do right here. I have sport, auto, snow, sand, mud, and rock. And of course, right here, the most important button of them all that not many other SUVs have, four low. To switch into four low, I have to be in neutral. I just push four low and everything is configured for off-roading, so I'm ready to go. Oh yeah, and one more thing too. This button up here is for my massaging front seats. Oh yeah. Tommy doesn't have that in his Defender. The Grand Cherokee starts in the mid 30s and extends all the way up through the $67,000 range, almost touching $70,000 in its fully kitted out configuration. The Defender starts in the high $40,000 range and if equipped with every bell and whistle can easily touch $100,000. So quite a bit more expense with the Land Rover. However, there's a bit of an overlap quite a lot of an overlap actually between the Grand Cherokee L and the Defender. This one as you see it equipped, this Land Rover is 71,000. That Jeep as you see it equipped, $67,000. So about a $5,000 difference. The Land Rover has taken a very different approach. Even at $71,000, the interior in this vehicle is much more utilitarian and in a lot of ways, I would say rugged. So the materials, you don't have wood on the interior of this model, but you got a lot of like neoprene and very nice feeling plastics that feel like they'll last a long time. Now tech wise, I actually think that this has less tech, at least dollar per dollar compared to the Jeep. So the Jeep is 5K less, it's got massaging seats, ventilated seats, a full sunroof. This vehicle does not have any of that, but it still has a lot of cool off-road tech. Land Rover, just like Jeep, offers varying levels of off-road capability depending on the trim that you can get. So starting off, air suspension. This model is height adjustable air suspension and you do that using this button here. You've got various different heights, uh, normal and then of course off-road heights. Now these knobs here next to the air suspension are how we change the different terrain modes. First of all, when you push in, the functions will vary depending on what setting you're in. So I can adjust the heated seats, I can adjust the fan speed like I did just there, but if I push this one special button, I can now change the different modes in the terrain response. Land Rover really pioneered the terrain response system in the older Range Rovers from the early 2000s and then extending that into the LR3 and they have done a great job of perfecting it in the new Land Rover. And the off-road screens are very impressive in this vehicle. So let me go into the settings. Not only will it display vehicle dimensions, which is pretty cool, but even cooler than that, it will show you how deep the water is that you are attempting to traverse. And it will allow you to go into four wheel drive info. So I can see my steering angle, I can also see the suspension height, the articulation, and of course, the pitch and yaw depending on where the vehicle's at. But one of my favorite features are the cameras. Tons and tons of different cameras, so you can do this cool third person view where it looks like you are outside of the vehicle looking at it from almost a drone but you also have front facing cameras and even a mode where it lets you see through the hood so you know what's kind of directly in front of you or underneath you as you drive along really cool stuff and a lot of built-in confidence because of these different modes and different settings so we're going to go up the harder side now call this the dare side and this is where we'll see probably more a wheel lift. And we're getting some rain here too, Andre. Yeah, and it's getting slicker because it's raining. Absolutely, yeah. What do you think of these tires? I think it's a more of a, well, it's not very aggressive for super off-roading, 
but it's a good, I think, compromise for fuel efficiency on highway ride and also some off-roading like we're doing today. I agree completely, Andre. I think they're really not bad at all and you can air them down. I'm gonna take the hardest line I can find up this section. This is where a typical crossover SUV would be just totally baffled, but I think you'll find the Defender will have no issues, even, even with it in auto mode. I'm not even gonna to go to rock. Let's see how it does. Look at that. I, Amazing. Yeah, and you're not touching anything, although you do have skid plates, don't you? I do have skid plates, but I've got more ground clearance than you. Uh, so I've got 11 and a half, I think, okay, is Okay, whatever. Versus your 10.9. Whatever. I mean, a lot of SUVs, even traditionally rugged SUVs, I do get a little bit nervous up that. But in the Land Rover, I just know that the computers will figure it out. And they do really figure it out. I mean, what was the first Land Rover to have traction control? Like. Discovery, I think. Yeah, that was decades ago. Yeah, and that was, you know, a little bit unsophisticated, but yeah. the new one is so good. All right, Andre, let's check out the second and third rows in both of these vehicles. So, uh, second row slides forward and back. This is a six-seater configuration. So, we've got the captain's chairs here, but let's see you check out the third row. Do I have to? You have to. You're bigger than I am. It's okay. a better test. All right, so I can flip this forward, which means I have pretty large, actually, access point. Okay. So I'm getting in the back. Look at this, I'm just over 6'2", as you know. Yep. Okay, so first of all, um, good knee room, but my knees are still high. Okay. Can you see that? I see that, yep. My knees are very high, but I do have, well, my head is touching. Yeah. So it's not the best for really huge people, <laughs> but, but, but for, you know, uh, somebody who's a little bit shorter than me, it's going to be just fine. I actually think for the size of you, you actually fit okay. It's 6'2", you don't look too uncomfortable. This seat is all the way back, too. And yeah. if we scoot it forward, that person will still be comfortable. And one of the big things they've done in this new generation of Grand Cherokee is they've incorporated the vents now in the pillars, so they're not on the roof. And they're very proud of that because apparently it's better for air conditioning you. I think the other cool part about the third row here, I have kind of a soft touch. Uh, elbow uh, pad here, I have a cup holder, I have chargers, I have vents like you said, even for the third row, and I have Easter eggs. Yes, you've got two little images of the Grand Cherokee and this new Grand Cherokee L. So Andre, sitting in the second row of the Land Rover, one of the cool things that Land Rover's been doing for a long time is the stadium seating, mm. where the rear seats actually sit a little bit above the front, you get this kind of cool over the shoulder look at the front of the vehicle. It feels very good. I do have climate control just like the Jeep and I also have USBs just like the Jeep, but what about the third row? Can you slide your second row back and forth? I believe I can, yep, uh -huh. you betcha. Okay, so let me actually get in the back. All right, so I fold this, move this forward. Uh, so already, so my entry is much smaller here. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, you might have to see my rear end. <laughs> Luckily, okay. it's all very durable, Andre. Okay, I'm getting in. Okay, good work. I'm getting... Wait, my legs are in the... <laughs> my legs are in the space. Yeah, you're pretty squished back there. But you know what? I have huge headroom. Very good headroom. Very good headroom. Absolutely zero legroom. <laughs> and alpine windows are awesome. I can see up. Yeah, that's nice. You also have air vents. Good Wait. I also have a flashlight. You have a flashlight and you have a separate control for the third row for the, the fan. Do you see that? Yes, I see that. It's pretty cool. I have storage cup holders. USBs? I have nowhere to put my elbow. Oh. I have, yeah. Well, I could put it like this. Do you have USBs back there? You do? Oh, yes, I do. Yep, they're hidden. So the deal with the Land Rover, it's very weird. You can get it in a five-seater configuration, a six-seater, which is three in the back, and then three in the front, it's a bench seat, or this seven seater, which is two, three, two, so slightly different than the Jeep. But I think that the third row in the Land Rover is definitely more of a occasional use situation versus a regular use in the uh, Jeep. I would agree. So we'll try going down the hard side and see. And you do have like hill descent mode, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, too. I can turn it on using the traction control button. And that, like you said, it maintains less than a mile an hour. It's, uh, it's interesting because Land Rover, when they launched this Defender, they got kind of a lot of grief for it. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, because it used to be just kind of a, you know, true, like, almost military vehicle, right, with solid axles, and but they turned it into a more civilized machine. Right, and it does have a lot of luxury features, yeah. I, I will admit. But even still, it's really remarkable how capable they have Are you using vehicle. any pedals right now? No, just steering. 
yet almost no stress. I got the camera system so I know where my corners are at. And I have to say, it does feel like a big vehicle, but I don't think it's quite as big as the Jeep in a lot of ways. I mean, look at the length of that Jeep. I know. Well, now it's my turn. Yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, Tommy, you ready for the cargo test? First of all, the hatch lifts upward. Yes, on the Jeep. On the Jeep. And the third row is up. How do you fit? All right, let me see. How many Andres can we, can we fit? I'm going to say one. <laughs> okay. Maybe one. Okay, so can you try to close me? <laughs> I don't want to hurt your head. Close it down. Watch your head. Oh, wait, my head is up. Yeah, you're going to No, have that's to... not going to... No. <laughs> so I would say... I would say this is... Uh, uh, three-quarter Andres. Okay, and we can put the seats down using the buttons that you're laying on. <laughs> okay, so... There you go. Oh, dude! Now, now it's like... Now it's like three Andres. Sweet! Look at this! Yeah, you could fit three in there. You could stack me this way <laughs> and have three Andres. Good work! All right, Tommy, you ready for this test? Yeah! Okay, so first of all, it's a different, uh, it's a swing gate. Interesting, so quite different there with the spare tire on the How back. How far does it go? That's it. Really? It's all she wrote, Captain. Okay, so let me see, how, with the third row up, how many Andres can we put? Oh, no. not so good, Andre. No. Maybe a quarter. <sighs> all right, here we go. Oh, what? Okay. No, that's not going to happen. No, I would say that's less. That's like a quarter. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Let's okay. put the seats down, see how they work. Oh, okay, so this is much larger now, and actually this is taller here in the, okay. in the Land Rover. Yeah, because it's got a flat roof. Well, you fit pretty good. I don't think it's going to fit three of you, though. No, but I think two in a pinch. That's a two Andre in a pinch, yeah. Yeah. Well, look at that, Andre, just like the Land Rover, you have the digital rearview mirror. Yeah, I do. So, you know, feature for feature, they're very similar, right. in fact. And only five grand separates them, really. So we've got... Very thorough cameras. It's pretty fisheye. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then I'm actually want to check yeah, out. Yeah, forward facing, because I can see my tire placement, right? Well, let me. Sorry, I'm gonna make you blind for a second. Let's check out the offer pages. Um, and I need to turn this up. Hold on a second. Nice. There. Can you see that? Yep. There you go. It's loading. There we go. So you can see what the articulation is doing on the different um, yeah. axles. You can see the off-road two on the suspension. You can also see the select terrain or an auto right now. Um, and then there's also a pitch and roll page. Yeah. All very cool stuff, Andre. All right, we're going over the rocks now. Yeah, this is the hardest um, actually section of this. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking a similar line to what you did. And you know what? Um, I'm also I also have a lot of uh, skid plates. I'm really hoping uh, they protect me because you know my tires are not as big diameter as yours. True that. Ooh. 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 Did you feel that? It's, it's getting a little, a little hung up there. I had to use a little bit more gas. Yep. To let it kind of find its way. Distribute torque where it needed to go. Yeah. But we made it up. That's pretty good. Yeah, I just had to give it a little bit more juice. Yeah, and we have the tire placement there and the camera. All is well. So Andre, as we make our way down this hill, yeah. let's kind of wrap up some of our thoughts. So yeah, totally. from a day-to-day -day drivability perspective, do you like the Land Rover or the Jeep more? If you had $65,000, would you get a top-of-the-line Jeep Grand Cherokee L or a mid-range Defender? So I think it has to do with many, many things. And I think when I look at both of them, you get more value in the Grand Cherokee L. Okay. Uh, feature for feature, you know, I have a panoramic sunroof here. Uh, I love that. Uh, but I also have to look at the kind of exterior, uh, you know, and kind of the tough look of the Defender. And I'm a little bit leaning towards that. Okay. You know, that kind of rugged look and the larger tires that you have on there. Um, but dude, this Grand Cherokee so luxury is so nice. Uh, it's kind of a close call. I think for me, from a day-to-day -day perspective, in a lot of ways, I think you're pretty spot on with the analysis of the Grand Cherokee. I mean, it, they've really elevated it to a new level of luxury. Ooh, Ooh picking up tires. Okay. Uh, just the way they've incorporated the new Uconnect system, the wood pour, the, the stitch leather, it really does feel like a very high-end vehicle. So for a day-to-day -day perspective, when you look at the third row usability, the rear seat size, this, I think, is better in a lot of ways than the Defender 110. 
from an off-road standpoint, it is very impressive what Jeep has been able to make this do. Yeah. I still think the Land Rover is a tick better. It feels a little bit happier, specifically in the departure angle. Yeah. If you take a look at the rear ends. Totally. Um, and then towing-wise, they both tow well over 7,000 pounds. Yeah, although the Defender has an upper hand there too. 8,200 pounds there, 7,200 here. Right. So, day-to-day, -day, everyday usability, I think the Jeep is better, especially if you get you know, more affordable one and you can save some money. Yeah. But from an off-road standpoint, I still think the Land Rover feels a little bit more comfortable. But today, both impressed on this uh, kind of a slick hill. Yeah, for sure. Well, let us know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, go uh, join us at tflaffroad.com and of course this channel for all kinds of real-world reviews. You betcha. See you next time.